Hi, I'm Dr. Graham Craig, and in this presentation, I'm going to show some techniques used in dentistry that do not involve the use of drilling or the production of aerosols. All the techniques involve the use of silver fluoride, and it's now realized that silver fluoride can be used in a number of situations where previously some form of drilling was required. And the beauty of the approach is that it's straightforward, painless, and requires no injections. Now let's have a look at some of the features of the treatment. And it's important to say at the outset, the treated decay areas will go black. So the procedures are not used in areas where aesthetics are of prime importance but they will go black. And the advantage of this is that if a lesion stays black, it is a strong sign that the decay has not progressed. If we have a look at the photo on the lower left, this is an appearance of a decayed area before the application of silver fluoride, and in this case, followed up by stannous fluoride. And the right hand photo shows the appearance after the application and the area has gone black. Some people call that the black diamond. Let's have a look at the roles of silver and fluoride. The silver disinfects the surface layer of a carious lesion where all the bacteria reside. And the fluoride component helps the tooth to repair itself underneath. Let's have a look at some examples in primary teeth. These are two cases, and these photos are of decayed areas in primary teeth six months after the initial application, and you'll notice that both decayed areas, or all the decayed areas in the top and lower photos, have turned black. Now, no injections were required. Now, let's have a look at the sequence. From the six month mark, if we have a look at case one at the top and look, follow the photos through from six months through to 24 months, you will see that the teeth, the tooth with the treated decay was eventually exfoliated and replaced by a perfect permanent successor. Now the same was in case two. The two uh, treated areas stayed black after six months. After 12 months, one of those teeth had been exfoliated, leaving one remaining. And by 24 months, that remaining tooth had gone. And where those two previous teeth had been, there are now two per perfect successor teeth. If one has a look at the series of photos here, you would think, oh my goodness, what, what, what are we seeing? Well, we're seeing a very interesting situation. If you follow the photos through from six months through to 18 months, you'll see that the decayed area that had been previously treated with silver fluoride followed by stannous fluoride remained the same from six months through to 18 months. And eventually the affected uh, tooth was, and its to the tooth in front of it were replaced by perm permanent successors. But the interesting factor here is that that lesion circled was very open and therefore open to the action of saliva. And saliva is very, very important in helping the remineralization and the hardening process to take place. And I've got to stress that at each stage, if we took that previous case, if need be, the treated area could have been covered with a tooth colored restorative material. Now let's have a look at the use of silver fluoride followed by stannous fluoride in aged care. The top left hand photo shows an area around the neck of a tooth. Now decay is very, very common in this area in elderly patients, very, very common indeed. And it can be very difficult to restore using conventional techniques. So if you look at the first photo 
and then followed with the second photo. That was immediately after the application of silver fluoride followed by stannous fluoride. You can still see that black gloss. That's due to the stannous fluoride component, but it's gone black. Now let's go to the top right hand photo and have a look five weeks later. There's been a remarkable change. And in fact, that tooth surface now is treated surface is very, very firm. So much so that the operator could place a tooth colored restorative material without any drilling. And the lower right photo shows the picture of that tooth some two years later. If we just concentrate for a moment on that five week photo, you'll see that there's a drying out and a, and, a, and, a def, and you can actually almost see the hardening of that tooth surface. And uh, this is what one is aiming for. Now here's an extreme example in aged care. I showed you an extreme ex example with primary teeth. Here's a, an extreme example in aged care. This patient had psychological and medical problems, but he needed his upper and lower denture for chewing. But when one took out the lower denture, one saw some root stump stumps underneath, and that's on the second photo. But those root stumps have been deliberately left there to provide support for the lower denture and enable the patient to chew better than he would have if those root stumps weren't there. But the problem was those root stumps had become decayed. On the top right hand photo, that's the, the shot showing the situation immediately after the application of silver fluoride followed by stannous fluoride. Now these treatments were repeated every three to four months and for a number of years. And if we have a look at the lower left photo, you'll see after th three years and 10 months, there's been a remarkable change. The, those root stumps look firmer and harder, which they were, and that continued through to the lower right photo, which shows the situation in four years, four months. If the root stumps have been removed in this patient, and a, uh, a new lower denture constructed, the chances are that he would not have worn it. He, he would not have been able to tolerate it. So it's turned out to be a very, very worthwhile and satisfactory approach. Now let's go through the treatment sequence. It's quite straightforward. A tooth to be treated is first isolated with cotton rolls. And the silver fluoride com uh, component is applied with a tiny brush, I call it a micro brush, and left there for one to three minutes. After that time, a thin layer of stannous fluoride is applied, and finally, a temporary, and I stress temporary covering, is placed over the area to exclude saliva. Now, this is done deliberately to allow the reaction going on underneath to go through to completion without any dilution factor. Here is a treatment video courtesy of Kathy Boyce, who is an oral health therapist, who shows how to use silver fluoride followed by stannous fluoride with no aerosol production. And here is I'm just drying this tooth off with a cotton pellet. Normally we would air dry this but we are unable to create aerosols and so I'm just drying it as best I can and it is very very effective even with this. Now because we are using a silver fluoride that is water based we don't have to be worried about um, protecting gingiva and I can really pop that down around there because this is a 6.3 pH and that's why I like this one. Plus the thing is we can leave it on here for three minutes without concern. And the longer application, the more uptake, the better off your result is going to be. So we're just going to leave that there for three minutes. And once that three minutes is up, we'll be able to pop the sanus on.
minutes. Now, three minutes is ideal. Um, and so that's why we wait for three minutes. And I'm just going to mop up now some of the excess and then apply the stannis to that tooth. And you'll notice there that that begins to run a little bit more black. That extremely black, messy area will not stay like that. It'll be only the areas of the decay. And remember that this tooth had been already treated with silver fluoride. And so you know that this is what it did look like first. And now we're back to it. And we're just giving her a top up to last this patient until this crisis is over and we can, life can return to normal. Now, I'm just gonna get some deer fat and pop over that. And what I like to do now is just put a holding material on that and I choose to use deer fat. Now you can use uh, aura based paste or a um, cocoa butter or anything like that. I just like to hold it there. In the olden days we used to use a stone adhesive wafer and what we're going to do here is just now put a little bit of water on there. Now we can't use a triplex so I have prepared just a little damp cotton. Yeah I'm just putting some water down there. We're coming. Yeah, that's just enough, just to set that Durafat. And we're done. So you can close up. Now, if one wishes to uh, investigate this process or the procedure further, there are a number of papers from the refereed scientific literature that cover the topic. And here are a few of them, there are more. And um, if one wishes to see the other ones, let me know. I've got my email address at the end of this presentation and just let me know. You, one may be interested, there are two handbooks on the use of the technique described and they're both available from uh, the Dental Outlook site as shown below. Thank you. If there are any questions, feel free to contact me at the email address shown below. Thank you.